Let's go. Go. What's up, bro? Man, my God, what's good, brother? I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. I'm oh chilling. It's in the crib. In the crib. Hit a baby right now. <laughs> yeah, she over here. She gonna be. She gonna be talking. She'll make. She'll make her way over here and say what's up. Yeah, that's what's up. We need to see it. We need to see it for sure. Um, how, how everything going? You straight, bro? Man, straight, man. Trying to maintain my peace with, with everything that's going on right now. But yes, sir. Yes, make sir. The best out of it. That's why I came up with this, man. And let me let me hear my boys' stories, man. Nah, <laughs> absolutely, man. Absolutely. I watched you and Quinjo. You and Quinjo was amazing. It was oh, good man. to hear. Good to hear his story. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. good stuff. Yeah, let's get it, man. Uh, first of all, I love what you're doing at Duke, man. Uh, people don't understand what I mean right now. It's like you're keeping us young, man. You're keeping us alive. You know what I mean, like. I really appreciate that, like the new unis and everything you bring it out. I'm like, yes, because people always give us give us this this look like well, that's goody two shoe boys, you know what I mean? But now we can we can kick kick y'all ass looking fly. So yeah, exactly, exactly. We gonna look we gonna look good doing it. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. I, I love it, man. But let's get into let's get into the interview, man. Uh, first of all, man, let's talk about your childhood, bro. Uh, um, I know you was born in Kentucky. Went out to DC, right? DC. So just just tell me something about your childhood growing up. Yeah, so so I was born in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, lived there probably since I was about five or six years old, and then moved to uh, PG County, Maryland. Uh, my dad was the coach for the Washington Bullets, now Wizards. Uh, and yeah, so we moved moved to the, moved to the PG County area. That's where I was pretty much raised my whole my whole life. Um, and just grew up, really grew up around basketball. Like I said, my dad was coaching. He played in the NBA for such a long time, went to coaching. And as for as a youngin, he used to always take me to the gym. So I used to be at the Washington Bullets practices, watching Rod Strickland and Tracy Murray, C. Webb, Juwan Howard, that, that whole squad, uh, which was a talented squad, just couldn't couldn't get past the Bulls. <laughs> you know, they always played them in the first round. Yeah, but. Yeah. No, nah, it, was, it was it was it was amazing to be around them. But then uh, at eight years old, that's when I lost my dad. And uh, after that, obviously life life changed. You know, if you lose if you lose a parent, you know everything everything changes. And it's my just my mom and my sister. And my mom pretty much had to wear both hats all the way all the way up through my sophomore sophomore year of high school when she got remarried. But uh, yeah, man, I mean that's just that's really what I went through. And dur through through all that, you know, I found. Found my love for basketball, and my passion for basketball. I used basketball as my sanctuary. Used right. used it used it as my my getaway place when I was going through stuff as a young kid. My mom would just drop me off at the gym and say, "Look, be here. If you're unhappy, go go to the gym." And I, that's where that's where I kind of hone my skills. Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. That's 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 what I was going to ask you. The next question is how you got into basketball. But pops was a coach and you played. Yep. So basically, that's you were you're not forced, but that's all you saw day in and day out. Like pop, so yeah, that's that's it. I wanted to, I wanted to follow in his footsteps. Mm -hmm. I wanted to follow in his footsteps. Wanted to be just like him, especially after he passed. You know, that was yeah. really like my my mission after he passed was like I want to be just like him. To this day, I still want to be just like him. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's like that's that was that was always the mission and then the dream. And you know, it's crazy how life ended up working out in a in a spirit in a spooky way. Ended up following yeah, in his that's footsteps. What was, that's what I was thinking when you were saying, I'm like, yo, you, you just like him, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a good thing, man. So after that, you fell in love with basketball, uh, then high school basketball occurred. Uh, yep. Tell me, tell me something about your high school career. So high school, I started at uh, St. John's uh, in the WCAC, which is one of the best conference, high school basketball conferences in America. Uh -huh. Uh had a very talented team. Uh, played with Chris Wright, went to Georgetown. Dwayne Anderson uh, went to uh, Villanova. Dante Cunningham, Villanova. And 
we didn't win the conference that year. Damatha, I think, won it because Damatha always, <laughs> always wins that league. They're just, right. they just good. That's Quinn, that's Quinn school until he went to Oak Hill. Right. But uh, yeah, so I was there, and then my sophomore, I ended up transferring schools because we moved from D.C. out to PG County, out, back out to PG County, uh, up in Marble, Maryland. So my commute to that school was like an hour and a half. I was wait, I was catching the metro bus to the metro train to the school bus. And I was getting to school and I was just like, <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't stay awake. So by like the like the end of the first quarter of, of the of the school, I was like, I can't do it no more. Like it's it's too hard. I couldn't even work on my game. So I ended up going to Riverdale Baptist, which was right down the street from my school. Uh, made that decision. Uh, Michael Beasley, who lived with us at that time. Uh, he was homeschooled, so Mike Mike Beasley moved in with us uh, wow, when he was thirteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that was that was my brother. So we we lived together, and uh, yeah, it was me and him. I'd go to school, and we had a, we had a good squad that year too. And then after that two years, after that two years, I ended up making the decision to go to Oak Hill. Um, I just felt like I did a lot in the area already, and I really wanted just like a, a bigger and better challenge. Know, for myself and to play that Oak Hill Academy schedule for two years. I mean, I played eighty. I played eighty something games in those two years. So it was it was, it was amazing. I always like big up people who, who go to Oak Hill because it's like, for sure, you were the man at your school, but you you challenge yourself at an early age. Yeah. To, to compete day in and day out for spots and everything. So I know that was like, I mean, at the end of the day, that's a, that's a, that's a big, that's a huge. One. Yeah. Nah, Doc. I always wanted to. I always wanted to play. I always wanted to play with other great players. Uh-huh. You know, uh, growing up in PG County, I was able to get that because everybody in PG that plays is, is talented. But I always, I always played with like like I said, played with Bees, playing with Chris Wright and Dwayne. Like I always had other D one players. A lot, a lot of high school teams aren't like that. You might have one guy, and they're the man. But I kind of wanted to challenge myself and prepare myself for ultimately what I wanted to get to, which was the NBA and see, like, can I be a star amongst stars? Because that's, that's realistic in basketball. Like, you're not, you might not, you, once you reach a certain level, there's only but so many superstars. So, like, can you, can you star in your role? Can, can you be a star amongst other stars? And I was fortunate enough to be able to do that um, at, at Oak Hill and at other schools. <laughs> it's, 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 it's dinner. It's dinner time. Let me let, let me know if you can't hear me. I'll, I'll no, just hold her. No, I can hear. You. I can definitely hear you. All sure. right. But no, nah, but that that's that's what's up, man. Again, after that, you went to, and I started talking to you the best school around. Uh, tell me, how did you decide to go to Duke? Uh, I decided to go to Duke really, obviously because of I mean, there's so many reasons. Obviously, when you choose a school, but the main reasons. Um, obviously Coach K, um, Johnny Dawkins being there, he was, he was that connection that I needed to my dad and cause they played together for the Sixers. So that, that was like uncle Johnny. So going there, I, I, I felt, I felt something special, you know, being there with him and, and aunt Tracy, you know, that's, that's family. And then, um, I mean, really the best of both worlds. I mean. Look, look at me now. I mean, when the, when the ball stops bouncing, I mean, you know how coach is. Like, yeah. he he reaches out, tries to check on everybody. Do good. Like, so I happened to just be at Duke uh, when I tore my knee, and then next thing you know, here I am coaching. So, yeah. you know, at an early age, when I'm making that decision to go to Duke. That's that was really the background in it, because like, you know, wanted to have something to fall back on. And I knew Duke when he came and sat in my living room. He talked about family, and now obviously it's the brotherhood. Like. Yeah. Yeah. That it, it was real, and I felt it from him. You know, he he always said like I'm gonna tell you the truth, and I I, I knew he was telling the truth about that. Yeah, definitely, man. definitely. His brotherhood. Cause look at us right now. Like I I can hit you up about anything. Even the this season, I hit you up. You always come through. Cause it's like, yeah. So, nah, uh, straight up. Yeah, but uh, like so now you at Duke, you clam, man. How was it? I know when I got there, uh, it, it was it was pretty tough. I mean, it was tough for me, but. Just hearing your background, you're from Oak Hill, so you are used to this. How 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 was it for you? How was this, the, the new transition for you? Yeah, it was it was tough. 
you know, it was definitely tough because honestly, back in our t in our time, we came in, we had to earn, we had to earn everything, yeah. <laughs> everything. Yeah. I mean, we there was five or six McDonald's All Americans on the court ahead of you that was, you know, still in school. They was juniors and seniors, so you had to work, you know. And I went in as McDonald's. I thought, like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna take Greg Paul's spot, and I'm gonna do this. Like, I have all these stuff in my head coming from where I'm coming from, and it didn't work out that way. So. <laughs> At the end of that freshman year, I mean, I played. It's not like I rode the bench. I played and, and got good minutes. But then after that year, Johnny Dawkins left. So at this point, I'm I'm like, dang, like, do I, do I really want to stay here? Like, yes. do I, should, I, should I look to go to Stanford with Johnny? Like, it, it just it, it, it wasn't really working out. I did, I felt, it didn't feel right. I didn't feel like I was me. Didn't know what type of player I was. Like, <laughs> I mean, like I'm sure, I'm sure you know what I'm saying. Yes, yes, like, that's, that's what I was about. Like, yes, I, I definitely you, know you, you start, you start asking those questions to yourself, and then, you know, the way my mom was with me, like I never, she wasn't gonna let me run from nothing. Like, she wasn't. That's just how she was. That's how she raised me to just be resilient, you know. And I went back sophomore year. I ended up taking taking that starting job, and you know, had a, had a very good start to my sophomore year. And after that, I had some injuries. And then I kind of lost the starting job again. So then here we are again. It's kind of like, dang, like, are they messing with me? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, is it, is it me? Yeah. Like, you know, as a young yeah. kid, you start asking yourself all these questions. Yeah. So, again, at the end of that year, everybody's like, man, you need to get out of there. You know, you know how people are back where you're from. They're like, man, you shouldn't have went there. Man, they messing with you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, again, Johnny called me. Johnny called me. like, man, trust coach. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. I'm like, okay. Like, I'm listening to you. I got you. So, do what I always did. Went back to D.C., got in the gym, worked, worked, gained confidence, a lot of confidence. And I went back my junior year. I was like, look, man, it's time. And fortunately, the roster also shaped up to be perfect because Gerald went pro, L.A. Williams transferred, and now it's only me, John, and Kyle as the guards. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> so so really that year, you know, it was the year we won it and, and it was a perfect year. And you know, just good question. My calling. Oh yeah, I already Um but yeah, you know, just all the trust trust in your work, trust in your grind, man, you know, really paid off that junior year. And then after that, I mean, look, I I felt like I did three years. I might as well, <laughs> might as well come back for my senior year. You know, after winning, everybody thought oh, you're gonna leave. You're gonna. I'm like, look, I'm. You do three, might as well do four. If you're gonna leave, you gotta leave after two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so coming back in, we had Kyrie coming in. I'm like, man, I get to play with Kyrie. Like right. this dude, this dude is special. And from day one, he was different. Yeah. He was different, and. I, I honestly believe if he didn't get hurt, Doc, I don't think we would have lost. That's that's what I always tell people, too. I said, if Kyrie didn't get hurt, then you would have had two for sure. Because he, he was definitely different. Enough. He he was different. He was well, you, the kids came in, I was like, he's nice. He's nice. You saw, you saw what he did versus uh, Michigan State? Yeah, yeah. Like, and before that game, he told me, he's like, yo, Smitty, yo, end up. I, I got us this game. Right, like all right, yeah, that's it. All right, young buck, let's get it then. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And he went out there and drove with 34, easy yeah. too, yeah. easy 34. Like, so yeah, man, yeah. I'm mad, I'm mad at that toe, man. I could have, could have had two <laughs> yeah. tips, could have been sitting, could have almost been at like the, the table right next to Christian Layton if I would have got two. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> at least, like, yo, man, how's your steak? <laughs> right, right. At least two of them, boy. Man, hey. It happens, man. It happens. But man, like, like you said, Kyrie was a beast, man. If he if he wouldn't get hurt, y'all would have definitely won the chip. Yeah, yeah, man. Definitely. But all right, now, so now you let me be a grown man now. Let me let me try this. Let me try to get to this pro level. Yep. Uh, pro. How, how did it feel? That feeling when you were drafted? It was 2011. Uh, I think it was uh, 21st pick. Yep. Uh, first round. Man, dreams coming true. How did you feel? Yeah, no, nah, it was it was amazing, man. All the when you, when you reach that point, you really just think about all the hard work, the 
the dedication, the resilience that you had to have to get to that point, everything that you had been through. Uh, obviously, it was a great senior year that I had just finished up. And, you know, it, it still was no telling where I was going to go. But honestly, in that pre-draft process that I was going through, man, I, I killed everybody. Like, like, I went into it with a chip on my shoulder because, you know, I was still, like, late, projected, like, late first, early second. So, you know, I, I definitely had a chip on my shoulder. Um, and I went into it, and no matter who they lined me up against, bro, I was just straight at them, you know, straight at them. You're, you're a killer. That's why I'm trying to tell people. Like, I'm like, that's one of my favorite players. Not just because you're like, I'm coming out, like, killing. Like, I see yeah. you just go crazy a thousand times, you know what I mean? So Yeah, you know, man, we, we, from, we, from, we from familiar cities when it comes to that mentality like you from the shy yeah. i'm from pg county like that's that's just how we are and if you're not like that you you lunch me yeah <laughs> like <definitely. And> <laughs> you respect that person like, hey, yeah talented, but you really you know what i mean you really need to grind. Like, you yep like that. yep yeah. so i so i had i had to have that mentality mm -hmm. and kept it so going into the workouts just really just attacking and come draft night Hear my name called, twenty first pick, Portland Trailblazers, man. It's just, it's a, it's one of the surreal moments, man. It was just, wow, all the hard work you you watched it, you watched it on TV your whole life, of shaking David Stern's hand. Uh, I didn't go to the draft. I stayed at home, my family. Just I, I just like the more intimate feeling of just yeah. being being with the folks that got me there right. instead of up in New York City in the limelight. Like I'm not really into into all that stuff for real. Yeah. Yeah, I was moments like that. I like it to be nice and personal. Mm -hmm. So stayed stayed up in Marlboro, a little little studio around the corner, and then went back to my crib. And KD was there, Quinn was there, Ty Lawson, B, like just everybody from the area was there. It was this amazing feeling to see all those guys that were already in the league. You know, they're there to welcome me. And then wow. from then it was time time to get to it. When you said that, I saw that like vividly. I saw the picture, like the guys there for you. That's what's up, man. That's yeah. how Chicago basketball used to be. I hope it gets back to that boys close man. Look at the closeness, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's huge, man. That's why we see successful because of you guys. And you telling me that story right there yeah. shows the reason why BC got a lot of killers. Really. Yeah, man. That that closeness, that closeness in, in cities will push you. Like if you're if you're not being pushed by your peers, like you're not going to get as good as you can. Like, no. because we were so close, we would text, we'd link up at gyms, we'd play, we'd play ones, twos, threes for hours, and we were constantly just pushing each other to reach reach a certain level, and we all end up getting to that level. Yeah, that's, man, that's a, that's a big story, man. That's huge. All right, so now, like, you played, played for a while, you played for Portland, then you went overseas for a while, uh, then you came back, then you played in the G League. But then you, you kind of, like, with me, I kind of, like, was over with, you know, I, I, it, injuries as well. Yeah. Uh, my dream wasn't to play overseas, you know what I mean? I'm like, let me go back to the crib. How did you decide and how did you come along with not playing basketball? Yeah, man, it was it was tough, man. Just, you know, after my two years in Portland, uh, good rookie year, second year, wasn't as great, you know, things were going on as far as the business, which, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, and then after that, um, the injuries happened mm -hmm. toward my calf right before I was getting ready to sign with the Celtics. So then I had to make the decision to go overseas because uh, I missed I missed summer league and then I was going to miss training camp too. Mm -hmm. So I ended up deciding to go to Croatia. Went to Croatia, balled out, had fun over wow. there, and enjoyed, enjoyed. Um, and then after that, I came back and honestly, I loved it over there. I felt I felt happy playing the game again. So I ended up making the decision to go back to Galatasaray just because I loved it. I loved playing. I loved, you know, feeling, feeling like I was back at Duke. You know, I think that was just, like, the thing. Yeah. I, I, like, And that's, that's taking nothing away from the NBA. The NBA is obviously the best lifestyle. But there's things about the NBA that's just that's just a business. Yeah, it's, a business. <laughs> it's a business. Like, you're yeah, on your you're, you're, on your, you're on your own. Coaches might not talk to you. GMs might not talk to you. Like, it's – it's grimy up there. Like yes. people, when people don't, when fans don't really understand what it's like. They're like, "Oh, why are these players acting like this?" And like, uh, all right, <laughs> it's yes. it's a business now. It's not it's not just basketball up there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I made the decision to go go back over there, and um, 
then had then had the money issues overseas. So then when I had the money issues, <laughs> I had the money issues, I came back. I came back, and then when I came back, I played three games in the G League, and I tore my ACL. So then I tore my ACL, came back to Duke, did all my rehab down here with Nick Potter and and Jose and those guys. And then at the nice. end, the best, best in the best business, guys. right? Right, best in the business. <laughs> So felt felt great, man. Felt great to be back down here with family and to, with, with people that I know, you know, love me. You know, nothing nothing like that. Um, it, but then at the end of the year, I was getting ready to get back to playing. I finished my on my rehab, and then I tore it again. <laughs> tore it again, my meniscus. I remember, I remember you did it. I didn't know you tore it right back. Yeah, the sec the second one kind of definitely kept it quiet because everybody was like, "Damn, why he ain't back playing yet? Yes. Like, oh. where is he at?" Because it happened, I kind of just like went went quiet. <laughs> I didn't really know what was going on and what I was gonna do. So when I tore it the second time, I had the surgery, and I, after a couple of days, I got back in and started my rehab back over. And then um, it was it was Coach Capel that came into the training room. I was on the table. He's like, "Hey man, just um, once you know, Coach and I just talked about you, and Coach wanted to know, you know, what are you thinking? Um, you know, if you want to get into coaching." The, the options open for you to, to be here wow. so so just you know a blessing man yeah no, truly a, truly a blessing definitely a blessing and again it, it people don't understand like with piggyback to what we were saying before it's really a family you know what i'm saying cable walks up to you he knows what you're going through uh he kind of sensed the you know it's in your career and he has your back and yep. K, you know like oh i got you son and that's people don't understand that's that's real, you know. We're mm -hmm. The brotherhood, but that's really real. And, and so that's, I mean, that's a tough story, but it, but but you here now, you know. You I'm I'm, I'm, I'm here now. <laughs> things things happen for a reason. A lot a lot a lot of great things came came of it. Came came of it, man. A lot of great things. Definitely, definitely. So now, man, I just want to talk about like your relationship with Coach K. Um, yep. I, I, to me, he's amazing, man. If I I tell people all the time, me. I'm probably in Duke history as far as a player. I'm low, 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 low. But if I hit up coach, he's hitting me back. You know what I mean? And that that's that shows as a man what type of man you are. You know what I mean? So yeah, just, just tell me some uh, relationship about you. Tell me your relationship uh, with Coach K. Man, it's 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 close. I mean, and obviously it, it didn't start out. It didn't start out great. Um, you know, freshman year. You know, he's hard on you. Yeah. You don't really know why he's hard on, but he's hard on you as a freshman. Yeah. And then, um, you know, sophomore year again, um, it, it it started to get better because during that summer, I didn't mention this earlier, but during that summer when Johnny left, Coach and I talked, and he said, "Son, trust me." You know, he was also another one that called me and told me to trust him. So that that was a big jump in our relationship right there, uh, with with Johnny leaving and him stepping stepping right in, saying like, "I got you." So. I think that, you know, that pretty much opened up his heart to me, and I, you know, I was willing to, you know, listen to him and, and trust him. So, really, from then on, I mean, junior year, obviously, you went championship together. Obviously, you know, he he looks at you a different way. You know, y'all, you, you know that. That's why he don't look at me like that. Hey, nah, man. You know, he lo you know, you know, he loves all of us, but it, it's a little different. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's got a ring. So, you get you get you get him a ring. He look he looks a little different, and yes. you know you got that championship bond. You know, so we we formed that, we formed that, which was special. And then uh, senior year, um, we got really close. You know, especially once Kyrie went down, and he turned to me like, "Look, lead us, <laughs> lead us," and you know, we go as far as you go. So we got super close. We talked all the time, and then. Uh, you know, once I went pro, we still kept in, you know, good contact. I'd call him every now and then just to check in. Um, yeah, man. So I definitely would say our relationship is, is super close, man. He's 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 a he's a real solid guy, man. You know that. Definitely, definitely. definitely <laughs> man. To the people always like, man, you shouldn't want to do. I just tell him like, man, in the end of the day, coach got my back now, so I don't even care what happened before or whatever the case might be. He has my back now. So that's huge. Man. It's sad. It's sad. I'm, I'm sure you know some of you guys that have played everywhere that don't, that can't say that. No, no. 
majority like, of them. Majority. Ma- majority of them, which is which is it's sad, but it's the reality of it. Not all coaches are like that with their players. So we're 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 fortunate that he looks out for our guy. Like for every player that played for him, he looks out for us. Looks out for him for sure. Oh, man. So now let's let's talk about basketball. Who's the hardest opponent? Right Who's that guy? You like yo? He's cooking you like. I can't do anything right now. I need help. Let's double team. Whatever the case might be, he's nice. Who's that player? Well, you got a lot. You got a lot. Man, <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, the one, the, the one guy, you know, and I always, you know, I always play defense. That's one thing. I always pride myself on defense. So the one guy I'd say really just had me just scratching my head that night, couldn't sleep, tossed and turned after the game. Was Tony Parker? Tony Parker. It's funny. I see. Funny. I see a comment from Paris. <laughs> like Tony. Tony Parker. Man, he was. TP was different, man, because he was like his slow to fast was so different. His in and out, double in and out move. Like he was. He's one of the best to ever do it. Yeah, yeah. I work with TP. Spurs, and made yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. His downtown, his, his career was, you know, kind of over, but he still, you know, still was tough. So I can imagine like Tony Parker. That's a good one. Just to see yeah. him play against him, like, that's that's a real good. One. Yeah, he's he's different. Yeah, man. So now, like, uh, you married? You had a daughter, man. I always want to talk to like you, my brother. Give me some, some advice. You know, I think I'm engaged, whatever. So yes, sir. Yeah, you about to jump <laughs> so that broom. So, man, you're younger than me, but you you're ahead of me right now, man. Give me some help. Give me some pointers, man. Whatever. My wife, my wife, my wife, right here. So tell I I, I gotta I got tell I gotta tell you all the great stuff. Tell, yeah, tell yeah. When we get out, tell me all the bad stuff. We'll take we'll take the other stuff. <laughs> nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. Nah, marriage marriage is it's amazing, man. But it's 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 it's, it's work. Yeah. It's work, and it's 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 a great it's the greatest job in the world. Just like being a father, yeah. it's the greatest job in the world, and you know, they like they always say every day, it's it's what you do every single day. Like you don't you can't just go through the motions of marriage and say you're married. You got you got to make that person fall in love with you every day, and not doing something different every day, but just yeah. trying to do little things, little things to keep the spice, little things to to, to show them that you you love them. Just mm-hmm. you know, and, and remain friends. You know, don't don't change up too much. You know, if you were friends, friends before marriage, don't, it shouldn't change. Like, best friends. And uh, Shane and I, we've known each other since my senior year in college. She went to Carolina. So she she knows me. <laughs> she's she seen me when I was super young. Now I'm 32. Like, she 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 knows me. She knows me like back of her hand. So, you know, just just keep that relationship, man. Just have fun. Have fun. Have, keep keep the fun in the marriage. Man, that, that means a lot to me, man. I definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, yeah. like, my girl's but I just need that advice, too, more than Yeah. Me, nah, me. absolutely. All right. Let's go finish it off, man. What would you tell uh, the young Nolan Smith? What would you tell the young you, right if you could? Uh, the young Nolan Smith. What would you tell him? Man, honestly, I'd probably tell him to work, work even more. <laughs> mm. Like, I always I, – and I worked hard. Like right. people always say I work, but for some reason I feel like I would. I think I could have worked even harder. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I, when I listen now and hear the Kobe stories, I'm like, dang. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, dang. Like, I I could have worked more. Yeah. You know, there are times where I feel like when I was in high school, or whatever, like I was sleep, or even in college, like my freshman and sophomore year, just because I was going through stuff. There are times where, you know, I did you know, a little bit slack off when I should have turned it up even more. Yeah. Like, yeah, that could have changed. So, definitely, man, man work. 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 You got time. Like, mm-hmm. your body's fresh. Take care of your body, but work. There's no such thing as overwork. I don't, I, I don't believe in that. Man, <laughs> that's real. Not like, I hope uh, some kids who, my kids who I train, some kids out there really listening to it, like I said, man, Kobe was on a different level and then he worked so why not you? you know what Look, I mean? work. Work, work. But that, that's all I got, bro, man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Nah, of course, time, man. You know what I'm saying? I know it's, it's dinner time with the 
baby girl and took your yeah. time out there. Good. Hold on, let me, let me, where's where she at? Let me see. Let's, let's just see her real she quick. bigger and bigger every time I see that <laughs> thing. <laughs> so good. Come here, mama. Say hi. What's up? Give me fast. Say what's up. Who's that? Cutie. You see him? Get, get your gun ready. Oh, you, you know it. Get your gun You ready. know it. All right, well, tell your wife, let, <laughs> let me have you for a little bit, man. I appreciate this interview, man. It's mean a lot to me, bro. You already know. You you know you my guy. Just yes, sir. just just like just like Quinn said. Right. Just just know just know that you use that dude that we was watching before we got there. Man, so. right. I appreciate <laughs> it. Everybody need to know. They, they shouldn't forget your name when they mention some of the Duke greats. Real talk. All right, respect, bro. Respect. <laughs> Straight up. Uh, for sure. All right, have a good one. Not my guy.